We always want all of our solos to sound mind-blowingly awesome, but instead of raising the bar on what our solo should be, we should be raising the floor. And the way we do that is making sure we have good rhythms, we have coordination between our hands, we also make sure that we're not taking up too many notes at the same time, and we should also be gaining confidence in what we're playing. So these seven exercises are gonna help with that. The first thing I'm gonna emphasize is making sure that you practice with backing tracks. There are plenty of free ones all over YouTube. What I'm also going to make sure that you know is that if it's a major backing track, make sure you're using a major pentatonic. If you're using a minor backing track, use a minor pentatonic. And always make sure that those roots line up. So if it's an A major, use an A major pentatonic. If it's A minor, use an A minor pentatonic. And in this particular one, we're gonna be using an A minor pentatonic. Although the pattern is going to be on the screen, I'm going to tell you that you can download it for free on my website over in the download section. So that first exercise, I call it singles. What I'm doing is I'm trying to teach myself where all the notes are on that particular scale. But I'm not just playing them once. I'm also saying them either out loud or in my head. In this case, I'm saying one, flat seven, four, five, flat three, one, flat three, four, five, flat seven, one. This is to make sure that I do know where I'm at. I also have to make sure that my picking hand and my fretting hand are synced up with each other. Now, notice I'm going pretty fast here. You don't have to go fast. Make sure you go at tempo with the song. I suggest that all these exercises are played to a backing track so that way your ear has context. This is not just a scale that is in the nebulous of the universe. It's a scale being played against the backing track and this will help your ear and mind remember where everything is at. That exercise is what I call doubles. Sometimes your pick ends up in an unusual position while you're trying to play, and while you're trying to alter the pick, it can get kind of awkward. Doubles helps with that coordination. It also helps with hearing which note that you're trying to play. Again, gaining more ear training in our soloing. Those were triples. It's very similar to doubles, but there's another thing that's happening here. We are trying to get our hands constantly in motion. Notice the first one had a bit of a gap. Da, 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 da. What that's doing is it's giving me a chance to think about what I'm doing. But when I sped up and did it faster, notice I have no time. Da, 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 da. It is keeping me in motion. Most people will pick up on the fact that you are making mistakes because you stop making noise. So if I don't know what to do, I can sit on one note playing it over and over and over again. This is normally called tremolo picking, and this is what triples help with. They help you with tremolo picking as well as keeping yourself in motion. Those were grace notes. The point of grace notes is to sound more human-like. Most people do not sing like they're from Mars Attacks. Da, 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 da. They slide into notes. So what we'll do here is, let's say I'm going towards the one, fifth fret on the E string. I'm gonna start on the fourth fret and then slide into the fifth fret, but I'm gonna do that very quickly. And this makes you sound more human. Why do we want to sound more human? Because then whoever's listening to you is more likely to understand you. The more human-like we sound, the better we're going to be to whoever's listening to us. So make sure you practice your grace notes.
That exercise was dealing with sliding. Sliding has to deal with two things. Again, something more vocal-like, but also mobility. As we gain more mobility on the fretboard, we're gonna actually have to move around. And if I can slide more accurately, then I'm gonna have more confidence in where I'm going. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm not looking at the note that I'm on. I'm looking at the note that I'm going to. So if I'm gonna be sliding to the fifth fret E string from the third fret, I'm looking at the fifth fret the whole time so I know when to stop. A lot of us will start to under or overshoot. Again, it's normal, but if you look at your target note and then slide to it, you're more likely to hit it. Those were sequences of three. What I'm doing is I'm starting on the first note and playing down three notes. One, two, three. Now I start on the second note. One, two, three. Next, start on the third note. And then keep going and come back up. Now the point of this is to, again, coordinate our hands, but it also makes us think farther ahead. I just don't think of the note that I'm on, but I'm thinking at least two notes in front of me. It also makes me think more angularly because I'm not just playing things in a row. I have to jump around to make sure the exercise is done correctly. So this is gonna help you sound more angular in your, in your solos. Those were sequences of four. It's gonna help you with, again, coordination, but it also helps you with mobility. I'm not just thinking of notes on one string, I'm thinking them on multiple strings because I have to think that far ahead. Now, for me, what I'm doing is I'm flattening out my finger to hit that note that I'm trying to get to on the adjacent string. Some people didn't like that. Sean Lane thought it was inefficient. Do whatever works for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you a solo that I took only using one pattern and the techniques that I just went over. Notice, you can sound pretty good just with those techniques. What I'm doing is I'm maximizing those particular ideas to get a gigantic effect. I don't need to jump all over the place. This last solo is demonstrating how you could take this idea and apply them to any scale pattern. Now I'm sticking with minor pentatonic here, but I'm using it against the whole octave systematic approach so I can show mobility. It's about sounding good, the phrasing more than just speed. <laughs> 